How to Eat Fried Worms, Chapter 5, The Gathering Storm. Alan and Joe stopped in the orchard by the pile of fresh dirt. You think he'll be able to do it, asked Alan, biting his thumbnail. I don't know, said Joe. He can't do it, said Alan. How could anybody eat 15 worms? My father'd kill me. Fifty dollars? He ate that one awful easy. Forget it, said Joe. If he doesn't give up himself, I'll figure something out. We could spike the next worm with pepper. He'd eat that one piece and then another. Talking to Tom, then all of a sudden, he'd sneeze. ka -choo! Then he'd sneeze again. ka -choo! Then again. ka -choo! ka -choo! A faint look of panic would creep over his face. He's beginning to wonder if he'll ever stop. He clutches his stomach. His eyes begin to water. Ka-choo! Ka-choo! Billy's awful stubborn, said Alan. Even if it was killing him, he might not give up. Ka-choo! Ka-choo! cried Joe. He falls to the floor. I bend over him. God, I say, call his mother. It's Trogolosaurus Tricers. His eyes bleed up at me. Ka-choo! Remember that business last summer, said Alan, gnawing on his thumbnail. When it was 95 degrees in the shade, and I dared him to put on all his winter clothes and his father's raccoon coat and his ski boots and walk up and down Main Street all afternoon. Ka-choo! Ka-choo! They went off through the orchard, Joe sneezing, sighing, rolling his eyes, pretending to be Billy, suffering from a dose of peppered worm. Alan moaning to himself about how stubborn Billy could be. Fifty dollars. Chapter 6, The Second Worm. Billy sighed. On the plate before him lay the last bite of worm under a dab of ketchup and mustard. What's the matter? asked Tom. I don't know, said Billy. He picked up his fork again. Does it taste bad? No, said Billy wearily. I just taste ketchup and mustard mostly, but it makes me feel sort of sick, even before I eat it, just thinking about it. He sighed again and then glanced at Joe and Alan, talking to each other in whispers over by the window. What are you whispering about? Oh, nothing. Then what are you whispering for? Nothing. It's not important. Just something Joe's father told him last night. What? Come on, finish up. It was nothing. We'll miss the cartoons. Billy shut his eyes and popped the last piece of worm into his mouth. Chewed, gagged, clapped his hands over his mouth, gulped, gulped, toppled backward off the orange crate. Sprawling on his back in the chafe, he gazed peacefully up at the ceiling. Joe and Alan stood over him. Open up. Billy opened his mouth. Wider. See any, Joe? Nah, he swallowed it. Okay, let's go. Chapter 7. Red Crash Helmets and White Jumpsuits After the movies, Tom walked home with Billy. Tomorrow, I'll roll the crawler in cornmeal and fry it like a trout. It's not really the taste, said Billy. It's more the thought. When I start to eat it, even though it's smothered in ketchup and mustard and grated in cheese, I can't stop thinking worm. Worm, 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 worm. Gaggles of worms in bait boxes. Drowned worms drying up on sidewalks. A worm squirming as a fish hook gores into him. The soggy end of a worm dragging out of a dead fish's mouth. Robins yanking worms out of a lawn. I can't stop thinking worm. Yeah, but if I fry it in cornmeal, it won't look like a crawler, said Tom. I'll put parsley around it and some slices of lemon, and then you can concentrate. Think fish. All the time you're waiting in the barn, all the time you're eating it, keep saying to yourself, fish, 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 fish. 
Here I am eating fish, good fish. Trout, salmon, flounder, perch. I'll ride my mini bike into church. Dace, tuna, haddock, trout. Wait till you hear the minister shout. Fish, 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 fish. Shark, haddock, sucker, eel. I'll ride my father in his automobile. Eel, flounder, blue grill, shark. I'll race all day till after dark. Billy cheered up. Think how they'll all stare. I'll rev up the aisle, zip around the front pews, down a side aisle, under the stained glass windows. My parents would kill me. Reverend Yarder peered down over the Bible stand. William, he'd cried, William, you take that engine thing out of here this minute. Yeah, and then they'd come chasing out after us, said Tom. Billy laughed, waving their arms and yelling, and we'd lead them zigzag round and round, and in and out among the gravestones and monuments in the cemetery. And then we're off down the Sand Cape Road, leaving them draped over tombs, panting and shaking their fists. Hop, hop, yelled Tom, dancing around and boxing in the air. And that Monday, we'd smuggle it into class disguised as Raymond Dooley because he's so fat and hide in the coat closet. And when... Miley Butler said anything, anything at all, even something like, excuse me, or if she sniffed, we'd dump a whole bottle of ink over her head and run for the coat closet, overturning chairs and desks behind us to slow up Mrs. Howard. She'd come after us, fuming and shouting threats, and suddenly the doors of the coat closet would slam open, and out we'd roar on our mini bike and blood red crash helmets and white jumpsuits, our scarves streaming out behind us, and we'd roar around and around the classroom while Mrs. Howard knelt among the overturned dust and chairs, sobbing helplessly into her hands, and then vroom, vroom out the door and up the hall, thumbing our noses at the monitors. Brackety, brackety, brack up the stairs, stiff arming tacklers, into Mr. Simon's office, up onto his desk. Vroom, vroom, a backfire into his face and zoom in out the window as he topples backward in his chair in a hurricane of quiz papers and report cards. And then, crunch, landing on the driveway, we roar off down the highway to Bennington and join the Navy. So Mrs. Howard and Mr. Simmons and our parents can't punish us. Chapter 8, The Third Worm Tom ran out of the kitchen of Billy's house, holding the sizzling frying pan out in front of him with both hands, the straight screen door banging behind him. Alan threw open the barn door when he saw him coming. Tom thumped the frying pan down on the orange crate. There, he said breathlessly, Done to a tea. Look at her, all golden brown and sizzling. It looks good enough to eat. Yeah, said Billy. He poked the worm with his fork. Tom took off the potholder glove he was wearing. Think fish. Remember, think fish. Trout, salmon, flounder, perch. I'll ride my mini bike into church. Eel, salmon, bluegill, trout. Wait till you hear the minister shout. Clam, flounder, tuna, sucker, look out, here we come. Old Mrs. Tucker, lobster, black, bass, oyster, stew. There goes New Orleans, here comes Peru. He leaned over Billy and whispered into his ear. Fish, 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 fish. Go on, take a bite. Fish, fish, fish. Okay, second bite. Fish, 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 fish. 